Hey guys, Hook to Clash here, and today's video is going to be some cuts from the live stream I did between Darkest Muzan and Dark Tangent, so enjoy the commentary and the nice attacks as per usual. I just thought I'd do a little intro here at the start of the vid to kind of explain the bracket for you and the, how the EWU qualifiers work. So, based on results from last season's EWU, a bunch of teams of order qualified for the main event, but for those who haven't, uh, who either didn't participate or didn't have good enough results, there's this single elimination 16 team bracket that's going on in every single region, guys. So there's an Asian region, there's a LATAM um, or Latin America region, there's a North America region and a European region. I'm crying for the record is in the North America region at the moment. Anyways, getting distracted. Uh, each region will have a 16 team qualifier single elimination event and two teams from each region will qualify for the main event. So as we can see here, Darkest Muzan is going up against Dark Tangent in the round of 16 and the winner will progress to the round of 8, whereas the loser will not be qualifying for EWU. So enjoy the live attacks, enjoy the commentary, give, uh, give us a like and subscribe at the bottom and hopefully you enjoy the video. And Ty is in on Crush's base here. Darkest Muzan coming in with the first attack of the war, guys, and he's coming in with the Zap Drags. We don't see a lot of this. Um, but I'm starting to see it more and more in this meta, and you can see why he's doing it. Look at what that, uh, the zaps at the bottom seem to get an Inferno, uh, probably an Air Defense, and maybe a few other things. No Expos, uh, but the single's definitely worth it. And look at the direction these two sweepers are facing, guys. These two sweepers are facing away from the Town Hall, and my guess is he's going to use his King and Queen to kind of go from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock to funnel that entire side where they won't be able to lure the CC because look at the range of the CC guys, it's not going to cover anywhere near the Sui and drag straight into the town hall behind both the sweepers I wonder what this, I wonder how much he expects from this E-drag look at it, he's got the E-drag in there and he's going to use the slammer to support the E-drag and that E-drag is going to clear out that whole compartment if he could get the enemy RC with that slammer as well that would be huge Look, the E-Drag's tanking for the Slammer. Not that the Slammer needed any more tanking. Well, the E-Drag gets out of range in time, but maybe I'm focusing on the wrong thing. He's coming with all the drags to the Town Hall. Hasn't lost many of them yet. The CC goes down, so even the, though the Queen got close to the CC range there, that CC is definitely not coming out. He freezes the, a couple of Air Bows and the Teslas in the core of the base. That's a nice freeze. It's going to keep his drags alive any, even longer. The only real dangers I see on this base, guys, is this back-end Eagle and the single. That single staying up kind of annoyingly as is the eagle guys I don't know if he's got this there is a lot left up and not much base but there is an enemy king what am I saying guys what am I saying he's still got RC ability this is tripled this is absolutely tripled what was I saying this isn't a triple this is absolutely wrecked nice triple from Ty here Darkest Muzan starting off strongly with the zap drags it was a really good plan on the base, guys, and you can see exactly why he did it with those with that sweeper setup, um, and just the zap value at the bottom of the base, and the fact that he could use his king and queen and not lure the CC was pretty OP. So good base identification there from Ty and Muzan. Start off with the triple. And Dark Tangent is in, Atif is in on Ty's base, Ty just got the triple, can he get the defense to follow up, we'll find out right here, more zaps guys, he's coming in with the zap, Yeti smash by the look of it, and yep, looks like he's gonna zap just about every building in this compartment here, nice job, this water walk's gonna be super short as well guys, I assume the mo most deep thing he's gonna get in the base here is the wizard tower actually, he's using a wizard and a minion to funnel out this, uh, what is it, it called, the siege I don't, I don't even... Oh, the workshop. I always forget what to call it, guys. I just call it a siege machine. Uh, unfortunately, the warden's going the wrong way, but he brings it back with the Yeti. Smart play to him there. And it looks like he's just gonna... He's not even gonna wall break, guys. He's just gonna force his stuff into this opening at the bottom of the base. Uses the king and the wizard to set a funnel. He's got, essentially, everything in his push down. The town hall activates, though. These bowlers activated the town hall with the bounce, and that's not what he wanted. And look at it, guys. He got zero value with his bowlers. He would have been better off bringing more yetis. He gets a good warden ability, but two springs go off. Something tells me this hit's baited, guys. Something tells me Dark, uh, Darkest Muzan knew this hit was coming, and I know it's early days in this attack, guys, but I can't see this tripling. I know I'm horrible at calling attacks as well, but he's lost the majority of his yetis here. Um, no bowlers whatsoever. He's already had to use his king, queen, and warden ability. He is, he is only just starting his RC, 
And like this multi in the core is not going to do much damage to his yetis, obviously. But look at it, guys. There's a double scatter and an eagle left up. And that queen's dead. She's long gone. Like he could... Look, he could get close on this, guys, but I can't, there's no way his RC and a bunch of hogs are going to get through two scatters, an eagle, and most importantly, the BK. So this is going to be a fail here. Um, just uh, the entry just didn't quite work out for him. His bowlers setting off the town hall kind of ruined the attack, honestly. Um, but he's going to try and get as much percent as possible. If this loon could get the wizard tower, nope. The loon doesn't, and not only is this a defense for Muzan, guys, this is going to be a low percent defense. So Ty has done absolutely everything he could have hoped to do in this war. Comes in with the early overkill triple, then comes in with a nice low percent defense. Looks like this is going to be, what, about 80%? We'll see. Can this wizard take out the BK? Oh, what a godly wizard, guys. Wait, why did the... Can someone explain to me this wizard AI, guys? How did that wizard... We're actually going to get the pen out. How did the wizard kill the king from here? And he... To shoot... What? There, he just goes all the way around like that. Wizard AI is strange, guys. Anyways, nice defense there in there. Uh, sorry. Nice defense there from Ty. And Wei, the world championship MVP, is in on Professor here. And what's he coming in with? A queen charge Lalo. Should have guessed that, honestly. He's very good with this Queen Charge Lalo attack. He's coming in with what I can only assume is a Yeti Blimp here. Or it could be an E-Drag here, guys, because there's no air targeting defense. No, nah, he just comes in with the Yeti Bomb. Fair enough. Um, what do I mean, no air targeting defenses? There's literally a double scatter, guys. He uses the Rage. I think he wanted to get the Eagle, guys, but he didn't get the Eagle or the enemy RC. So, honestly, I'm going to consider this a failed Yeti Bomb for what the value he was sort of looking for. Does clear out the whole compartment nicely, though. And it looks like he's going to get this Eagle on the Queen Charge anyway. So, maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought. The Queen should go up here. He's got the healers down. Has he got a Headhunter? Yes, he has, but he doesn't use the Headhunter yet. Maybe he's saving these Headhunters for the Lalo portion of the attack. He's using the king to funnel in the queen nicely. There's absolutely no doubt where this queen's going, guys. This qu this queen is going into the base. She should right here. Yep, she does. I was actually kind of worried about it for a sec. And she's in here. She's got no jumps and no extra wall breakers, though. So I'm interested to see what he's expecting to get from here. In saying this, if this king and RC clears this entire compartment at 3 o'clock, then the, uh, the queen should go into the core of the base. The RC is running away from the multi, though. Oh, and the Queen's going to beat a wall to the multi, guys. I'm fairly confident he wanted that multi down with the King and the RC before the CC came out. And now he's got a really awkward CC to deal with. We will zoom in. He does pop the freeze. You've got to pop the freeze on these uh, Inferno drags if they're allowed to sit on your Queen for too long. So that's unfortunate for way there. But even with this uh, Queen charge going bad, it is going to leave the scatter shot up, up unfortunately. But it's, it's not like he's at risk of one-starring this, guys. A lot of the time when you see, like, queen charges from the far side of the base go badly, you're worried about the one-stars. Look at that tornado getting set off. Definitely not the best use out of the tornado there. He was baiting a blimp for the town hall, um, but didn't come in this attack. He's going to pop the warden ability right there. Perfect warden ability. Look at this queen as well. She's been an absolute babe going into the core to kill the scatter. Now he's got the two headhunters in the core. It's just going to be whether these headhunters can take out the queen and the RC, but the queen locks on to our warden. That's really unfortunate. unfortunate. And now the loons are going to have such low health. The loons without the warden are just so weak, guys, and unfortunately the Queen's beating... Actually, it's an okay wall, to be fair. This is an okay wall for the Queen to beat, but this isn't going to have enough. Maybe if he had an extra, like, two minutes, this Queen with her ability would be enough to take out the rest of the base, but unfortunately we don't have 20 years to take out the rest of this base, so this is just going to be a nice try from way here. Really nice plan. It's just unfortunate that the King and RC didn't get the... F Why is she shooting this wall? She could literally walk around... Like, look, her arch... Why am I surprised about the queen shooting the walls, guys, though? Why am I surprised? And uh, that's going to be a fail from way. Nice defense to Dark Tangent. And Piyush is coming in on number one here. Let's see what he's coming in with. He's coming in with, what, the Zap Hybrid? Ooh, a seven Zap Hybrid, though. Guys, normally we don't see seven Zaps with this Hybrid attack. But uh, you can see why he's bringing seven Zaps here. I'm guessing he's zapping the CC. And he's going to take out, like, the Warden, Archer Tower, and a Multi, right? He's still got two final zaps, and he's going to take out the Arch Tower as well. 
That's really good value for the zap. Oh, we like this, guys. We like this. Look at where this charge is coming from. If I was going to guess what gun what's going to happen, guys, he doesn't really care which way his queen goes here. Whichever way she goes, he's going to uh, wall break into like that scatter compartment and then hybrid through the single on that side to force his queen into the core, and he'll get a second layer wall break to get into the eagle. So it's a nice plan, honestly. Oh, that headhunter died early, though. Or is the headhunter still alive? I should zoom in a bit. I can't see. Oh, the headhunter was alive. He was just hiding in behind that. Sorry, guys. I need to do a better job of zooming in for you all. Um, so, yeah, it looks like the queen's going up. So if I'm going to guess, he's going to wall break like this cannon, but more likely, actually, the dark elixir drill using the yeti and the wizard at the top to funnel that side of the funnel. Yep, there comes in the wall breaker right on the DE drill. He's bringing an ice golem as well. That's interesting. You don't see a lot of ice golems for queen charges, but I'm guessing he's worried because he had to use seven zaps on this queen charge, guys. So he's probably worried about having a lack of... Oh, no queen. No queen. His yeti and wizards did not create enough of a funnel, guys. His yeti and wizards did not create near enough, and he's putting down the RC to try and save this charge, because if this RC can go into the core of the base instead, that would be lovely, because he does need to clear out this eagle. He would love to get that back end scatter as well, but these healers are not switching. The healers needed to switch onto the RC there. He's still got RC ability, so he is going to get the eagle by the look of it. Hopefully he does, but this back end scatter is going to be an absolute pain for this attack, because he's already used his one heal, so there's no... There's one free spell left, guys, and somehow he's got to get through the rest of the base. It's a good Warden ability in saying that he's lost a few Miners to the enemy Queen, because the Queen pulled the Miners off the Town Hall. But it's... Uh, I mean, he's got a chance here, guys. Like I say, when, like, a Queen charge fails on a hybrid, if you've got your healers left alive, you've always got a chance. I would have saved this Freeze, though, guys. These free That Freeze only benefited like four or five miners and they ended up dying anyway he's got a headhunter left unfortunately should have used that on the town hall if these healers could actually move up and heal these hogs oh the hogs are such low health where are the healers going what are the healers doing does he have enough this is incredibly close guys does he have enough to get through the back end of this he's still got the queen it, i think the biggest thing here will actually be time it's probably time. Oh, look at this. The OP cleanup headhunter, guys. This headhunter is going to go into the core of the base. And this is a triple, right? This is this looks like a triple to me. And it is going to be a triple. What a great uh, fix on the fly there. Great adaptations. And he's going to come in with the triple for Dark Tangent. Look at the difference in the wall, guys. It's four buildings difference. This is going to be an absolute crazy war. And B is in on Saub's base here, guys. Let's see what B is coming in. Ooh, a drag clone attack. So yet again, Ruzan coming in with the drag attacks. Seeing some weaknesses on these uh, Dark Tangent bases. And look at this clone value. I want, I'm want. i interested to see how far away from this scattershot he pops this clone. Look, the scattershot's kind of overlapping. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No way, guys. As if, did that just happen? Oh no, that could not have gone any worse. He he let his blimp go way too far, guys. For those who don't know what just happened, he put the clone spell down right next to the eagle, but the, the, um, the blimp just went a few tiles too far, and none of the balloons got, none of the balloons or the e-drag got in the clone spell, and he just got zero value from that. Oh, this makes this attack so much more interesting, guys. Because what he wanted with this drag clone was to create sort of a funnel at 12 o'clock. So that he could sp kind of spam the drags through this single here. And they'd go into the town hall and around the base. But now he could get a serious drag split here, guys. It's possible he'll have some drags go to the eagle. Look at that. He's trying to get a few drags into the eagle. But you're not going to take that down, man. The RC is protecting that with her life. He is still is going to get the two stars here, guys. But this is... This, uh, this, sorry, Eagle's going to stay up the entire attack, which is obviously not what he wanted. This Rage spell isn't going to quite work out as well. It's only one Drags getting the benefit of that Rage spell. This looks like it's going to be a big fat fail, guys. Um, and that's just what happens. Clone spells are not easy to use, guys. You think it's simple, you just put it down on the spot. And the troops go into it, but it's never that simple. And when you're, even the pros are failing it, you know it's not easy. So this is going to be a fail for B. It's really just how much percent can B get here. Um, and honestly, B's done a solid job here. He looks like he's going to get to maybe 80%. No, probably not quite. No, what am I saying? Probably not quite. He's going to be lucky to get to 72% here. 
nice try. I honestly think it was a good plan. Uh, just uh, the execution on the uh, clone spell or the popping open of the blimp is going to cost him here. So a uh, good defense to Dark Tangent. And Chris is in on Way's base here, guys. Let's see what he's coming in with. Looks like he's coming in with just a generic hybrid, guys. Is this like one of the first attacks in the wall without zaps? I feel like we've seen a lot of zap today, guys. Looks like he's starting his queen from the top of the base here. Uh, let's see. He's got no wall breakers, guys. So if I had to guess what's about to happen, looks like he's going to start his queen up there. Whichever way she goes... He's probably going to blimp the single Inferno on that same side. So I'm going to guess he's going to blimp that single at sort of 3 o'clock. And hopefully that will force his queen into the town hall. Look, he's got the Coco Loon and the blimp. Guys, I am on fire today. I am on fire. Pop the blimp perfectly. Oh, is this blimp landing in? Oh, no, guys. He missed it. He missed it. He needs to rage these Yeti Mites. Rage the Yeti Mites. You need to rage the Yeti Mites, man. Otherwise, that single's not going down. Okay, I no, that rage isn't covering the Yeti Mites. Come on, Yeti Mites, do it! Oh my god, how did that work out? This poor man probably baited this and spent hours testing it, and it worked, and still the single Inferno went down, even without raging the Yeti Mites. And look at this. Because of this multi in the core, guys, his queen's kind of safe. He is going to need to rage her, though. Okay, he doesn't opt for the Rage. He goes for the ability. I think he would have been better off with the Rage spell, but he's going to need to Rage now anyway, guys. He does get the Rage down there, and he has got his Hybrid coming in from sort of 3.30 there. The King went in and got, like, four buildings and then died to the King and the uh, Scatter Shot. I think he's going to pop Warden ability. No, he goes, for the, he goes with the uh, heal. Fair enough. We'll see what he's going to try and do with his remaining Freeze. Will he use it for the Queen? On, like, the enemy RC, or will he use it on his hybrid? No, he's letting his queen die. Fair enough. I think that's the right choice. Hopefully, these healers can heal the miners in the core of the base. He goes for the freeze there anyway. I hope he doesn't regret that. I think he might want these freezes come the back end of this base. Thankfully, this RC is super low health, and his RC is just chilling at the bottom of the base. I think the biggest threats in this base are definitely, uh, is definitely this RC scatter bomb tower sort of combo altogether. Plus the single, and he has to pop the RC ability early. And this looks like a defense, but given how low percent Way's attack was, guys, I actually think Dark Tangent's about to take the lead in this war. Even without the triple, I think they're going to be up on percent. We'll see how much percent he can get here. He has got three sneaky gobs left, so he's probably going to take out the three collectors at the top of the base. Maybe two? We'll see. He's placing them one at a time, which is honestly smart. Look at that. By set, not putting them all down at once, it meant that uh, he didn't waste a Sneaky Gob where he didn't need one. And he's actually going to push into a reasonable percent here. Unfortunately, there's nothing for this Sneaky Gob to target anymore, though, guys. This Sneaky Gob's going to run inside the base for this Elixir Storage, and there's no chance that Sneaky Gob's getting that Elixir Storage. But anyways, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a reasonable percent attack here. And I believe Dark Tangent are taking the lead. Oh no, I hope I haven't missed too much of the attack here. Oh my god, guys, we missed a minute. I'm so sorry about that. I was checking the war and got distracted. But if I was to guess what happens, guys, to just kind of try and go through everything that's happened so far, they did an Electron at 9 o'clock there for this Drag Clone attack. It looks like the clone spell actually worked, but I think he wanted to get rid of this Scatter Shot, guys, and wasn't quite able to get rid of the Scatter Shot. And he's coming in with drags from the top, and he's going to use... He started with the Queen at sort of uh, the 2 o'clock area, and her job's to get that air defense, and now he's going to use the King. And that King can hopefully tank for this Queen and keep her alive. She will have to pop ability here, but that is okay. And he's saved the Warden ability perfectly. And look at these drags, guys. They're going to be carried through the town hall here. It's just, it's really up to the drags how far this attack gets, guys. He hasn't got too many of them left. Why was he hanging on to a drag? He's just dropped a random drag at the top of the screen. That's unfortunate if he didn't mean to hang on to it. I know some of the time I misdeploy stuff. If he can save this RC ability for this air defense, he might just have enough here, guys. The main target, the main uh, defense left on this base is this air defense, though. This air defense has taken out a whole host of his drags. There goes the Warden. Oh, if that RC ability got the air defense, I think he had this, guys. He only just uses the freeze now. Hopefully the drags can. Do you reckon the drags have enough to get through this? 
Uh, they don't go to the air defense though. If they direct target the air defense, he might have had a chance here. This is going to be so close from Kartik, but isn't going to uh, quite work out there. And that's going to be, that's unfortunately going to fall just short there for Kartik of Darkest Muzan. And now Indian Clashes or Dark Tangent have a huge chance to pull away in this war on percent and on stars. Nice try there to Kartik. Saub is in on Kartik, guys. What's he coming in with? He's coming in with a Yeti Smash? You feel like there should be a... F well, it's like a... It's not even a Yeti Smash. It's just like a Smash... It's like a hybrid Smash attack with a mix of Pekkas, Bowlers, and Yetis. I don't even know what to call it, guys. Is it still a Yeti Smash? I don't know. We'll try and commentate this attack, though. Looks like he's just going to do a mini Queen and Warden Walk together. Now, it's always scary using the Warden with these Queen Walks. Because if this Warden starts to take damage, and the Queen's taking the damage at the same time, the healers will not always switch back to the Queen. And a lot of the time, you'll find that the Queen will die completely preventably. But it's going okay at the moment, because the Warden hasn't taken any damage. Uh, Poison looks pretty good. I don't think these Pops will quite die, but he's got a minion there. And obviously, the Warden's going to help out with the Queen. And they'll get through all of those slowly but surely. And I wonder where he's going to come into the base from, guys. Is he going to go straight into the multi? Also, we can kind of see why he... Oh, no, guys. Look, that minion activated the town hall. No way. One minion. You had one job, minion. And that was to take out the pups. Not to activate the town hall. And we've lost all the healers. Or maybe... Ooh, two of them just survived. But we have lost three of the healers. Uh, that's majorly unfortunate for this attack because he will need all of this healing through these multi infernos. Obviously, for the singles, you don't need the healing as much because the singles just take out the uh, yetis. But for the multis, you absolutely need the healing. We'll see. He has to pop queen ability as well there, guys. This is not the cleanest attack he was looking for, and the queen's gone down already. Those ground bows really picked her off. The uh, the yeti bomb, or with there's probably a sneaky gob or two in there. Um, goes in for the Town Hall. Is this going to take it out? Oh my... Oh, that was so close, guys. That was so mighty close. He probably had Sneaky Gobs in there as well, but unfortunately those Yetis kind of drew the attention of the Mortar. So the Mortar does splash damage onto the Sneaky Gobs. But it's all going to be up to what percent he can get here. Obviously, this isn't a triple, guys. But whether uh, they come in with the percent lead or not going into the last attack will be up to Sayob here. And it looks like he's going to get... Look, it's not the best percent attack, honestly. But given the, some of the hits we've seen in this war, it's probably going to be enough. So I think Dark Tangent will go in with the percent lead going into the last attack. But they definitely would have wanted to triple this. Um, when you have a chance to uh, not put Darkest Muzan away, but definitely make it difficult for the, them to win, you got to take it because you just know Darkest Muzan, like they're gonna, you just know they're gonna come in clutch. Like they'll probably triple this last hit. So hopefully, uh, Tangent does the same. He's just slowly racking up the percent here. Th thankfully, this Peck is gonna do a lot of work. I would love to see a new Pekka skin on a side note, guys. I don't hate the pink one, but I feel like we can definitely get a better Pekka skin out there. And I don't think this peck is getting any more percent. So that's going to end at 76. Yet again, normally a low percent attack. But in the context of this war, it wasn't so bad. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Look, I don't care if it's not a 13-12 war. If you're going to give me this sort of percent, holy best attack wins, guys. Best attack wins. And they're coming in on P. Yush's base here. Darkest Muzan, the percent is tied, guys. The war is dead even after four attacks. This is absolutely crazy. What can Darkest Muzan come with here? I swear, if they triple this base, this stream's about to go... Well, this war is about to go from, you know, a bit underwhelming to one of the craziest endings to a war we will see. Let's see what can happen here. He's using the A-Drag. Yet again, they're coming in with this Zap-Drag attack. Clearly, uh, Darkest Muzan have been playing around with this. We have seen a lot of drag attacks recently, though. Drag attacks are really strong at the moment. I'm not sure if he uh, got enough zap value, though. Oh, look at this, guys. Wait, it kind of looks like he's setting up to come from the far side of the town hall with this. Look at... I'm interested to see what he expected to get from that uh, that funnel, though. Did he expect the E-Drag to create a better funnel? Because he does not have a perfect funnel here, guys. This gold storage and builder hut might pull a few dragons. So uh, I hope he's got a plan for that. Uh, he's coming in with the drags, though. Straight into two air defenses, guys. He's lost a lot of drags already. 
He's lost a lot of drags already. He, I don't know if he meant to hold on to the balloons or not. But look at this. And the king's coming in and luring the hound straight in front of his drags. Guys, this is not going well at all. I feel like I'm allowed to say this. This is not going to plan at all for number one from Muzan. All the drags down the bottom are dying to this hound. And the warden followed one drag and he's off by himself. He's going to swag the warden ability, guys. He is absolutely going to have to swag this warden ability. I'm, I just don't know what he expected to get from this. He still hasn't used his queen or the RC. Is this a disconnect? Is this a... No, he started his queen. I was so worried that was a disconnect for a bit, guys. He's probably just figuring out how to save this attack. He can get to 50%, guys. But this is not what Muzan wanted. They're going to need a monster defense on the last attack here to have a chance. He has to pop queen now or the eagle's going to take her out. He's starting with the bats on the far side. He needs to blimp this town hall as well, by the way. Like, maybe he's waiting to 50% so he can kind of send the RC in so that she can do damage to the town hall as well. That might be the play here. Honestly, not a bad play. Unfortunately, the eagle's hitting these bats, though, and all the bats die. Where's he going to send this blimp from, guys? If I was him, I would send the blimp from 5 o'clock because all the drags have been through there. Oh, no. Oh, no. He sends it straight into a single and an air defense. Oh my. Does he get this? No, no way he gets it. Oh no, guys. What happened here? What happened? All that Professor has to do here, guys, is two star. That's all he has to do. It's simple as that. He's coming in with a drag bat. I'm not going to lie, guys. Drag bat's not the safest two-star strategy of all the strategies in the game. But if I was to guess... Yeah, I'm guessing he's going to come in with the drag bat from sort of 7.30ish. Let's see. Oh, look at this. Oh, we like this, guys. We like this. I approve this message. Look at that super archer, guys. That super archer is taking out a uh, wizard tower. And I'm going to guess... Yeah, look at that. He does another super archer at the top of the screen. Oh, but he missed. Oh, he, that's unfortunate. But he would have been able to take out two wizard towers with just two super archers. And yes, it costs a bit of troop space. But taking out wizard towers, especially flanking ones, is huge for bat pathing. Unfortunately, though, he kind of messed up this uh, super archer at the top. So I'm not sure if he's going to get this wizard tower here. I kind of doubt it. Going to use the king, and that king will just beat through that Tesla farm quite nicely. He still hasn't used his queen. I wonder where he's planning on using his queen. There she is at 9 o'clock there. So the king and queen are going to move in whilst the drags do as well. He's got a blimp for the town hall. I hope he saves his RC for the town hall here, guys. Please don't use your RC before. You literally only need two stars here, Professor. Looks like he'll get it, though. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that this town hall's about to go down. Bam. The blimp makes it there. We're just going to focus on this blimp for the second, guys, because uh, that's what matters in this attack. And bam, the town hall's down. He's at 56%. So Dark Tangent, take the win, guys. But the real question here is, can they get, to, can they not only win, but win comfortably? He bat bombs the scatter. How smart is that? There's no splash damage near that scatter. And if you put bats on top of it, the uh, bats will get in the dead zone of the scatter shot. So you don't have to use a freeze there. Uh, has it the... Look, the drags didn't get as much as he would have wanted, guys, but, like, this is wrecked. There is no two ways about this. This is wrecked. GG to Professor. Coming in clutch, even if, uh, even if the final attacker from Muzan had saved the attack and turned it into, like, a 80% two-star, wouldn't have mattered anyway. Professor comes in with an absolutely crushing triple. Warden eats the Sam just before the end of the attack. Classic. And that's going to be a win for Dark Tangent, guys.